All right, everybody, let's get started today. Uh, first off, thanks for joining us. My name is Neil DeMajor. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing over here at Imagine. Uh, today, we are doing Imagine Academy Quarantine Sessions number eight. Uh, this one is all about digital implant planning with ExoPlan, um, digital case designing with ExoCAD, and we're also gonna be doing a lot of really cool 3D printing with the Nextent 5100. Uh, so I'll introduce my guests here in a moment, uh, but till then, uh, a couple of just quick housekeeping things. Uh, if you could, please um, keep your mic uh, and your video off throughout the course of the presentation today. That will allow us to keep our presenters front and center where we like them. A um, few other quick things. If you have any questions throughout the course of the presentation today, we absolutely want to hear those. Uh, we love to have these um, webinars be a really dynamic, interactive type thing. So if you see the presenter doing something or if we go over something a little too quickly and you just want us to come back to that, um, send us a quick chat message on the chat function here that's built into Zoom. Uh, and I'll be keeping an eye on that throughout the presentation. And when we uh, take a break uh, or we have a pause in the presentation, I'll be able to um, field that question to the presenter. So, um, so without any further ado, I'd like to get going here um, uh, introducing my guests. Um, first off, who's going to be presenting first here in a few moments, we have a gentleman by the name of Matthew Kennedy. He's the owner of um, a lab called Creative Restorations Dental Lab down in Florida. Uh, they're a small kind of boutique high-end lab. They do a lot of really beautiful full arch reconstructions, a lot of implant supported stuff. And Matt has been using um, both ExoPlan uh, for gosh, I think about a year now and ExoCAD for probably going on 10 years now. So um, Matt's a real uh, power user of the software and he'll be showing us a lot of different things here coming up very soon. Uh, we also have Adrian Slevin from 3D Systems. Uh, 3D Systems, of course, is the maker of the Nextent 5100 printer, uh, as well as the full suite of Nextent 3D printing resins. Um, so Adrian's going to be joining us towards the end today um, to talk about some of the things that we're going to be printing to support this case. Um, she's also going to be doing a lot of presenting tomorrow, and that's another thing that I wanted to mention real quick, uh, is that um, this is a two-part course, right? So uh, today we're going to be focusing on the digital implant planning. We're going to be focusing on um, case design and ExoCAD, and we're going to be focusing on um, kind of preparing to print uh, in a software called 3D Print, which comes with the Nextent 5100. Um, tomorrow we're going to focus a little bit more on 3D printing, what's possible to print for cases like the ones we're reviewing today, and then we're going to bring it back over to Matt at Creative Restorations so that he can do the aesthetic finishing. Um, so two-parter, so if you're joining us today, definitely join us tomorrow, uh, same time, same place, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you can register for that on our website, ImagineUSA. Com. So um, last but not least, we have joining us from ExoCAD America, uh, my friend Dave Caballera. Um, he's, uh, gosh, wears many hats over there. He's in charge. He's, you know, part of the marketing team. He does a lot of applications work, but, um, you know, my idea for him is just overall ExoCAD guru. So he's joining us here as well to answer any questions you might have. And word on the street is he might even give us a little sneak peek of what's coming up in the next release of EXO plan here. So keep an eye out for that later on in today's presentation. Um, so Thanks, Neil. yeah, without any further ado, um, we're gonna get started here with Matthew Kennedy, uh, owner of Creative Restorations. Uh, Matt, can you can you hear us? Can you see us? Have you worked out your, uh, your audio and video? We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Looks like Matt's screen might be frozen there. Dave, do you want to uh, share your screen and maybe uh, give us that preview of, of ExoPlan, some of the new releases on there? Yeah, actually, I can I can pick up where Matt left off here. Um, okay. And uh, that way we, we don't, there's a little more continuity. So, you know, it may not be the exact positions that you were working with, Matt, but I do have this, this same case. Um, so let's go ahead and share that screen. That sounds great. Thank you. And uh, can you guys see this? I can also answer that question that came up earlier. That looks good. We can see you just fine. All right. So um, someone had asked, you know, how do, how do you communicate the timing of the implant? And if we, let's hide this and try to look further down in here. So you can see that there's geometry here that, that does affect, you know, the, the components 
anyone that's working with implants will, will tell you that it, it's pretty important to make sure that the implant is timed correctly so that the abutments and everything on top of it will sit correctly. Um, not so much the case with multi-unit abutments, but uh, in many screw retained situations, you're gonna have anti-rotational markers or other geometries that, that will get in the way. So um, you can turn on, uh, for example, marking of an angle or uh, marking the, um, the wall. So those are the two options that are available. So depend, depending on the preference and the communication style, uh, you can generate that. Uh, I have it set to just a single marker, but you can also turn on all locations where there's a flat edge and that might make it easier. Uh, so in the current release, we, we just provide the single marker. Uh, this upcoming version that, that you're previewing now uh, does have more options there. All right, so I, I am going to just select okay here for the sleeve mounts. We'll jump into the wizard. And uh, this is actually going to take me back, um, back a step because I was going to demonstrate some other uh, functions here. Uh, sinus segmentation is, is something that is going to be added to the new release. And uh, what you do is you, you essentially just uh, highlight the sinus region and select a seed point. And then you can start the segmentation and create a mesh that is then visualized there in 3D. Where that's useful is if you have an implant, uh, like on this site here, let's switch over to the other one. Um, we'll start the segmentation on this side. Now this implant is, is not near it, but if you, if you did have implants further back, you'd want to be able to be alerted of any sort of collision there. So uh, that's a, a nice new feature and visual that's available on, uh, on the upcoming release. So just go ahead and uh, continue here. Unfortunately, you guys have already seen this uh, report generation. I'll, I'll skip over showing you the report, uh, but we'll go ahead and design the surgical guide, which is where, where Matt left off. And um, there you can see the, the path of insertion. There's a few more features that, that are uh, visualized here on this latest release. Now, I think Matt recommended to set this at 0.08 for starters. Uh, that's a good recommendation, and I, I also like this snap fit that's uh, produced by the, the allow undercuts section there. Hey, Dave, real quick, we've got a question from the audience. Is uh, bone segmentation, uh, is that possible with Exoplan? Bone segmentation, um, yeah, to a degree. So uh, once this gets done and calculated, I'll, I'll show you something up here on the DICOM control. Turn that on, and if you if you set this uh, this bone level at, at where you want it, for example, let's say that you wanted to visualize the uh, the roots of adjacent teeth or something. You can generate this surface, and uh, what the software does is it it calculates this as a as an STL or triangulation file, and from there. Um, you know, if you have dental CAD or another mesh editing tool, you can, you can pretty much crop out what you want. You could do this in a previous step when you're getting things aligned. Uh, there are some um, uh, surface editing tools earlier in the process, uh, but that would be one way to do it. Um, and then you could, of course, export those files to remove that geometry from a model, for example, to show the, uh, the emergence profile of, of the existing root um, root form. So uh, plenty of applications there, but uh, the way to just initially generate your, uh, your DICOM data into STL geometry is through the DICOM viewer up here. So we'll 
go ahead and move back to the surgical guide design. Uh, now we're at a step where, very similar to the um, bite splint module, you can just pretty much draw an outline over uh, the area that you'd like to include the guide on. And, uh, you know, Matt, Matt may have a different uh, way of designing this. I'll just do a full large, but a lot of people stick to quadrants nowadays. Um, and certainly pros and cons there. Uh, of course, if, you're, if your image is nice and accurate, you'll, you'll have more stability, but sometimes with uh, intraoral scanners, you may want to limit it to a, to a smaller field. So uh, we can here set the, the thickness and um, any smoothing levels that you'd like applied to the, to the guide itself. So that's gonna produce pretty much a stent over the teeth. Now you'll see that you, you have this area that comes over the teeth and that's what these red cylinders indicate. These red cylinders are clearance areas where the software will cut out anything that's in this space. And that's just to, to allow room for the handpiece. So we'll move to next. Um, and uh, now, now you're provided with an opportunity to add some inspection windows, if you'd like. You can add multiples. Uh, you can also add uh, a label, for example. Just lay it down, and then you can rotate it around. Now, this might be pretty long text, so it's having a hard time with that. Um, what we can do is just, uh, you know, short, shorten the name there. And then you can change the size and location, set the location where you want it. So something like that. There you go. Um, so that, that's the inspection window um, showing you a text label. And you can also add support bars. So sometimes um, maybe you have uh, teeth that are pretty distal to, to where all the action's happening. So you could just create um, mount connectors. And this is in the upcoming release as well. What you do is you select two of these sleeve mounts and it just pretty much creates like a bridge connector between them. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a new feature there. And then we also have uh, standard support rounds where let's say that you just wanted to add a support beam in the, in the distal to, to make sure that that stayed at a, a set distance. So uh, plenty of options here. I'll go ahead and just delete that for, for this purpose here. But, um, you know, this is, uh, you got quite a few tools and you can kind of preview before you move on to the next step and just see what, what all of that's gonna look like and proceed to next. At this time, everything's going to get merged. Uh, the geometry that's going to be removed will be removed. And now you're provided with a thickness map. So what this shows us is areas that may lack um, thickness and, and maybe an area that, that you want to increase. So we have access to the freeform tools here and uh, maybe I just want to create more thickness here so that I have a, a more rigid guide at the implant site. Um, if you don't want, you know, that little lip there, you can certainly smooth that down. So uh, if you're familiar with ExoCAD, a lot of the tools and functionality are, are very similar to, uh, to the dental CAD product. And, um, you know, once, once you're okay with that, we click next and, uh, and that's your, your surgical guide. A final report is generated and this provides you with the information on the, on the surgical protocol. So uh, what is the drill depth, which handles are you using and so on and so forth. Uh, if there is any sort of color coding that will also be available uh, on that as well. So here again, you, you get kind of a summary for each implant the surgical sleeve that's in use, drill colors, all that stuff. All right. Um, Matt, are you able to take back, back the screen? 
I think our friend Matt is... We are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Interesting. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Can you hear okay. us? No, I couldn't. Uh, I think Zoom is like malfunctioning today because I've been on Zoom every day for yeah. weeks and nothing's working properly. So, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, so the first thing is that um, I'm going to show you guys how to nest several different objects today. And everything that Matt has or will be going over tomorrow is um, something that you can print on the Nextstamp printer. Now, it doesn't matter if you have the Nextstamp printer or you're using Nextstamp materials. All of these same things apply as well. So for his particular workflow, I've printed out um, his pre-op model, the diagnostic model, um, a denture model, which I don't want to ruin the surprise because he's really got a lot of really cool stuff to show. This is everything that has to do with this particular case. The only thing you can't print is obviously the final, which is the zirconia or whatever material generally is zirconia for you're all on four. So um, tomorrow I'm going to go over quite a bit of nesting and preparing and then Matt will take over and show some characterization, which is um, really nice. I'll show some images as well. But the materials used in his presentation that I'm going to show you are um, the model 2.0 for the working model and pre-op and the diagnostic wax up. I've got some tricks that you can do with that diagnostic to make it look polished or you can even polish it um, as well. You can use um, Keach and Gray for the working models and the opposing. And then I've got a, a new thing that we're working on right now and that's the indirect bonding tray it actually works really well as like a matrix. So you can almost go model list if you're not going to um, print out the models, you can actually make your matrix or your shell temps, depending on your doctor's preference. And you can do your immediate provisional um, with CMB MFH or your shell temps. Also, your try-in, you can use try-in material. It's a little bit cheaper than MFH, but it'll be something that you can do um, your try-in right away and then print your provisional out of CMB MFH. Uh, a bite stabilizer, stabilizer or your night guard. Um, would be with your ortho rigid, uh, your custom trays, and surgical guide as well. So I'm going to show you a few different nesting techniques and a couple tips and tricks today, and this is going to be very brief. Um, tomorrow I'm going to go more in depth about your uh, build time, your cure time, and your total time all together, what you're looking at for material cost if you're going to print, which is significantly less than if you were going to uh, use your mill to mill things you could print. And then setting up your parts for success and accuracy. I have some tips on that. Regardless of the printer you're using, um, I will be using the Nextent printer, but I've used many printers in the industry and a lot of the same rules apply. Um, tips and tricks for being successful all the way through the, to the end, things I've learned. And then I'll hand it back over to Matt. Obviously, we're going to start with Matt tomorrow so he can show us how to design all the stuff I'm going to show you how to nest. So I'm going to share my... Um, my nesting screen now, if I can figure out how uh, to get Zoom to work with me. And let's see, so we're gonna work with 3D Sprint. So let's see if I can find my desktop here. Okay. And then if we do have time tomorrow, I'll show you how to design the matrix. Um, from your 3D sprint, or from, well, you'll repair some, some models. It's, it's pretty cool because sometimes you save your scene as an STL in your ExoCAD, and, and you can actually repair that file and bring it back into ExoCAD. And especially if you were going to mill something, but it costs you $50 in just materials to mill like a PMMA. If you wanna check that, then you can actually print it out of, try in or CMB MFH, check your fit, check your design, your orientations. And then, you know, in 20 minutes, you'll have a design check and then you can send it over to the zirconia or to the PMMA. So the first thing that I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and nest the surgical guide. I wanted to give you some tips about how to be successful with surgical guides, how to get the best fitting sleeves. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, hit printer. And one of the nice things is in ExoCAD, they Everything after Matera has uh, the Nextent material settings in it. So even if you're not using the 5100, you may want to try um, using some of the settings. It has all the minimum thicknesses in it and um, things like that. So you won't have to mess around too much with 
trying to dial things in if you're not using the Nextint printer, even so. It will actually launch the Nextint, this software, uh, from your ExoCAD after you design. So if you're not going to nest everything that you've done in the day, maybe you're gonna design and then nest, um, you can go right from ExoCAD and it will actually already select all of this um, material and everything, so you won't have to do that. So we're gonna use my uh, tooth maker. We're gonna hit next and find the material that you're going to use, and this would be the surgical guide. And everything else is standard, so you can just hit set, and we'll bring in that surgical guide. Now this is the surgical guide that Matt is going to prepare, or, or actually you just saw Dave do that. And I like to get it right onto that um, build platform. Now, whenever you're nesting a surgical guide, the tooth fitting areas are going to be facing up, away from the build platform. So you can quickly go and um, just use Q. I like to use my hotkeys and just flip that over. You can also use um, a couple of, if you're not a hotkey person, you can just hit transform and it'll bring up a box and you can do it that way. My goal when I'm nesting surgical guides or anything that's implant based. So let's say that you're doing a screw retained crown, you're doing a provisional, you're doing an analog model, you're doing a surgical guide, anything that has screw channels or fitting surfaces, circular geometries will be um, as vertical as possible to the build platform, okay? And I know that sometimes obviously you have different angles because you have to, but if you can get those almost as vertical as possible, you have the best fitting um, sleeves or analogs or um, the fit to the tie base or whatever it is, try to make those as vertical, okay? So basically in surgical guide, we've added a new um, type of support. So once you get it oriented properly, you're gonna hit smart support. And here we've added general fine tip. And I really encourage you to always switch it to that because there's no reason not to. We've got a nice fine tip on there and you can add a couple of um, points. And I'm gonna show you some different photos tomorrow of what happens if you don't um, pay attention to flat surfaces with this. So they snap right off real nice. So now you don't have to worry about putting them where that sleeve is going to rest. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I usually, you won't see me modify supports often, but I will always add at least a couple of points. And these are fine tips, so you don't have to worry about them leaving scarring. Okay, so you're just going to make sure that at least in each quarter of the sleeve area, you're gonna have a support and then hit update supports. And you're gonna add it to your queue. So that's, that's what there is uh, with surgical guide. Now, if you don't add that support, like you saw me add at least one in every quadrant, you may have like a wavy area because um, it's not made to do completely flat, okay? Without a support. So I would recommend adding your um, support to a flat area and then add it to your queue. Now, we're also going to nest our provisionals and our shell temps and our immediate right now, which Matt is going to do um, the design for you. That's what I had planned today. So we're gonna hit close. And you would generally save your project just in case it's like saving your scene file when you're designing. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my material. And we're gonna use CNB MFH for this one. And again, if it's just a try-in, go ahead and use try-in. It prints really fast um, and it's a little bit cheaper than the permanent material or the long-term. And we'll use bleach today. And I'll show you the conversion chart, by the way, tomorrow, a quick slide on that. So let's find our provisionals here. And Matt has a couple of things for this case. He's actually gonna do a full arch case and then a, um, uh, the singles that you saw. And also you can do uh, your, your denture and a conversion. He's got a bunch of stuff um, in here. It's pretty cool. So the first thing I do is auto place. And I always do a zero and a zero because I want it to be as close as possible. I want it to nest it really tight with a lot less work for myself. And always allow that Z-axis rotation so it can bring it in and put it real nice and close to the build platform. Okay, so now a couple of little tips. Um, if you see something with yellow or red, that means that the geometry is not closed. This is probably made um, for milling perhaps, and you wanted to check the design. So I'm gonna go ahead and repair that and this, this other one with the yellow. So highlight both of those, go into prepare, just hit fix. 
And if you're an ExoCAD person and you hit save scene as, sometimes it won't put out something ready to print. All you have to do is use that fix function and you'll have a nice print ready to go. So you can see I have a screw retained crown. Uh, I have my immediate. Okay. And you'll just add that back to the print. It'll keep that orientation. Now, a couple tips as this denture here, I'm gonna use my Q button. Always put that at a 65 degree angle if you're doing like a denture with a full palette. I usually do it for my lowers as well. Because um, if generally, if there was more of a ridge here, you might get some suction when it was lifting up from the plate or from the membrane. And so what you wanna do is called cupping in uh, 3D printing terms. And to keep that from distorting the inside, you'll just put that at a, a 65 degree angle, okay? Now, with anything that is going to fit on your implants or on a prep, you're going to flip that upside down, okay? So I'm gonna highlight all of those, use my cue, and flip those so your margins are facing away from the build platform. And remember what I said about the uh, geometries, the screw retained geometries, you wanna make those nice and vertical. Okay, and then you'll have the best fit. So we wanna pull all those back down. And it'll be uh, three millimeters from the build platform. You don't wanna build directly onto the build platform. Okay, so everything looks good. Now what I like to do as well, since I have, since I have this on implants, and if I was doing any all on fours, uh, any lower um, implant retained anything, I really like to have a bar here maintaining it so there's no uh, distortion cross arch. So what I'll do is I'll hit create bar and I'll just put a small bar and you can cut this off after you do your post cure. It's no big deal. Um, so hit apply, keep it off that fitting surface and actually pull that down if we want. Okay. Okay, so now you have that, that stabilizer bar, okay? So we're gonna hit smart support. We don't need to combine anything. We don't have anything stacked over each other or overlapping. We're gonna hit our supports. And we have some nice fine supports. They look a little big on the screen, but actually they just peel right off. Tomorrow I'm gonna show you how that peels off. I'm gonna show you how to start the printer, give you some cost per part. Even if you're not using the next imp printer, you can still expect the same weight. Um, I'm also going to modify this because if I ever have something that I really need accuracy on and there's not a lot of support, it'll still very easily um, print. However, I want to ensure the most success. So I'm not going to have any large areas that don't have a support. Okay, and I'm going to send this to the queue as well. And tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to post process. I'm going to show you cost for parts. I'm not going to take up your time for the rest of the after two o'clock because I know you guys have all probably planned your day. And I'll show you also uh, nesting models and some tricks for diagnostics as well. That's I'm kind of excited about that. So, um, Neil, is there any questions or anything? Yeah. So we, uh, one thing that I wanted to add on there, getting back to when you had an open uh, STL that wasn't watertight there, we had a comment in the chat room about uh, using the option to uh, optimize for SLM and 3D printing in ExoCAD. Yep. If it's set by default, that will solve that problem of uh, having open, open meshes. Yep. So that was a good kind of tip over there on the room. Uh, and then we have somebody asking, uh, is it possible to design a full arch temporary prosthesis with Exoplan as it is demonstrated here on printing examples? For that type of design, you would need dental CAD. Uh, Exoplan is, uh, you know, the, the tooth library and the positioning that you see with an Exoplan is primarily for visual purposes. Uh, something to get you in the ballpark. Uh, generally, when labs own both products, we actually recommend that you start in dental CAD so that you, you design the final crown exactly how you want it uh, so that there's no compromise on, on where you're placing the, the screw axis channel and things like that. And that of course is all limited by the implant position. So um, unfortunately uh, in the, the full arch that you see here on the print plate that was designed on dental CAD, not exoplan. And that's a good distinction to make because what you know one of the things about Exoplan that makes it um, such a great tool is that it it integrates and it works so seamlessly with 
the dental CAD product by ExoCAD that, um, that a lot of times folks aren't sure if they're in ExoPlan or dental CAD, you know, uh, but the two work together so well um, that it's, it's easy to regard them as one product. But to your point, Dave, they're absolutely two different things, two different dongles, uh, two separate products. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through on the on the chat line here. So um, at this point, I'll, I'll give my sincere thanks to everybody for hanging out with us today. I know we had uh, we had some technical hiccups here and there, uh, but I think we got over them pretty well. Um, by all means, join us tomorrow uh, at the uh, same time, two o'clock Eastern time at eleven o'clock Pacific. Uh, we're going to bring Matt. We're going to have him start off uh, and return to the design that he had planned for today. Uh, and then we'll bring it back over to Adrian to show us how to print the variety of appliances that Matt uh, has planned. Uh, and then last but not least, we'll do a quick touch back to Matt over on aesthetic finishing, how you can take something that's been 3D printed uh, and you know hit it with a brush and a polish wheel and bring a good degree of vitality to it. So uh, definitely join us for that. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Um, and of course, uh, thank you all for joining us here today. We'll see you tomorrow at two o'clock. Thanks again, bye-bye.